When she was nine years of age, a girl did a science fair experiment in which she tested professional touch therapists to see if they could sense her energy field. She flipped a coin to select whether either her right hand or her left hand, and then she asked the therapists to identify the selected hand by placing their hand just under her hand without seeing it and without touching it. Among 268 trials, the touch therapists were correct 118 times. Use a 0.10 significance level to test the claim that touch therapists use a method equivalent to random guesses. Do the results suggest that touch therapists are effective? Okay, first let's identify the claim of this particular problem. So we are testing the claim that the touch therapists use a method equivalent to random guesses. Okay, so now we need to identify the given information. And we're going to either use the p-value or the critical value method. So we first need to find out what is the sample size. So how many trials were there? Well, there were 268 trials. Okay, and then what is a point estimate of the sample? Well, we know that the touch therapists were correct 118 times out of the 268. So that means it's going to be 118 over 268. Okay, now what is the proportion? Well, it says to test the claim that touch therapists use a method equivalent to random guess. Well, the random guess means that you either have it on one hand or the other hand, the left or the right hand. So that means that's 1 out of 2, which is the same thing as 0 0.50 and therefore Q would be the complement which is also 0 0.50. Okay so now let's look at the requirements. There were 268 trials that were randomly selected and there is a fixed number of independent trials which is 268 and the requirements is taking the value of N which is 268 And then we're going to multiply that by P, which is 0 0.50, and that gives us 134, which is greater than 5. And then 268, which is N times 0 0.50, gives us 134 also, which is also greater than 5. So we would say that these three requirements are satisfied. Now let's take a look at the claim and the opposite of the claim. Well, you can look at the claim here. It doesn't give us a number, but it's basically saying that you have a random guess either the right or the left hand. So again, going back to the claim here, we're going to say that P is equal to 0 0.50. And therefore, the opposite of the claim would be that P does not equal 0 0.50. So let's identify the null and the alternative hypothesis. and using the claim and the opposite of the claim. So we know that the null hypothesis is always going to contain the equality and then we have the alternative hypothesis. Well the equality is in the claim here and that is that P is equal to 0 0.50 and therefore the alternative would be that P does not equal 0 0.50. So let's go ahead and put in our answer here. So we know that P is going to equal 0 0.50 and the alternative is going to be not equal to 0 0.50. Okay. Now we're going to identify the test statistic, but before we do that, let's determine what type of tail test this is. Well, we're going to use the alternative hypothesis to determine whether it is a left, right, or two-tailed since it's not equals we know that this is a two-tail distribution or a two-tail test. Okay, and then what is the significance level? Well, up here we can see the significance level is 0 0.10, so that means that alpha is equal to 0 0.10. Now let's go ahead and then identify the test statistic. Okay, well, we know that the sample size is equal to 268, 
And then we also know from the given information at the point estimate is 118 over 268. We know that P is equal to 0 0.50. And we know that Q is equal to 0 0.50. So let's plug it into our formula. So we know the point estimate is 118 divided by 268 minus P, which is 0 0.50. And then we're going to divide that by the square root of P. 0 0.50 times Q, which is 0 0.50, and then divide that by N, which is 268. And then we're going to round that to two decimal places. So let's go ahead and do that in our calculator. So parentheses 118 divided by 268, and then minus 0 0.50, and then we're going to divide that by the square root of parenthesis 0 0.50 times 0 0.50 parenthesis and then divide that by 268 press enter and then that should be our test statistic so now we want to be able to round that to two decimal places so we get negative 1.95 as our test statistic. So let's put that in here, negative 1.95. And there's our test statistic. Now we want to identify the p-value. So in order to get the p-value, we want to draw and label the curve. So here's our curve, bell curve. We know that we have a mean of zero. And we see that this is a negative value so over here to the left we have z which is equal to negative 1.95 and therefore that represents one tail but remember that we have two tails here so we want to be able to find that p-value so to find that p-value we're going to first find the area of the one on the left so we want the probability of the test statistic being less than or equal to negative 1.95. And then we're going to use StatCrunch to determine that. So let's open up StatCrunch. Since it's a Z test statistic, we're going to go to Stat, Calculators, and then scroll down to Normal. So and we know we're pointing to the left, we're going to put in our test statistic of negative 1.95, and then there's our p-value, and they want us to round it to three decimal places. So that gives us 0 0.026. Now again, because it's two tails, we need to take 2 and multiply it by 0 0.026. And so multiplying 2 times 0 0.026 gives us 0 0.52 as our p-value. So 0 0.052. Let's go ahead and put that in our result. 0 0.052. There's our p-value. Now we want to state the conclusion. So before we state the conclusion, let's compare the p-value to the significant level. So we know that the p-value is 0 0.052. We know the significance level is 0 0.10. So therefore, the p-value is less than the significance level. And so we reject the null if the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level and fail to reject the null if the p-value is greater than the significance level. In this case, it is less than, so we're rejecting the null hypothesis. And so since we reject the null hypothesis, now we need to come back and take a look at what the original claim is. Well, the claim has the equality sign in there. So when we take a look at the four different options for our conclusion, the first two says it does not include equality, so we can eliminate those statements. 
And then since we include the equality, we also rejected the null hypothesis. So therefore, we would then eliminate the last version of it. So we would then choose this as our conclusion. We would say that there is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection, the claim that followed by the original claim. So in this case here, we're going to say we reject the null hypothesis and there is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that the touch therapist use a method equivalent to random guesses. And then we would say the results what? Well, the results would then do, would, do not suggest that the touch therapists are effective. Let's check our answer and there is our result.